Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's your girl, where am I looking? Where am I looking? I don't even know where I was looking at. I guess I was talking to you guys up there. Welcome back to the channel. It's your girl, Lori. If you are new here, I am an alternative therapist and I do a lot with anxiety, depression, OCD, overthinking, relationships, life in general, and I also struggle my own with anxiety and other things like that. So if that's something that you're interested in, consider hitting the subscribe button, subscribing, Obviously, if you're hitting the subscribe button, hit the bell in the corner for notification. You'll be notified every time I post. So let's talk about overthinking and obsessive thinking. Now, I know you saw the one that I did on, if you haven't, I'll put a little note up in here, but obsessive thinking and overthinking, you can have them together, but they are different. So let me explain a little bit about overthinking. So overthinking is very much linked to perfectionism. So think of if you are an artist, and you say, okay, this line just isn't quite enough. Like, is this line good? Well, if it's not good, are they good? People might say that I'm a bad artist. Like, okay, well, I don't know about this line. So you start overthinking it, or it's really hard for you to make a decision. So you're like, okay, well, should I do this? Because if I, if I do this and it's not right, what's gonna happen? Like, what's this person gonna say? That's overthinking. To be fair, that's normal in life. We all have a level of over thinking like you just have to like let that roll but it's when the overthinking starts to go in the other direction so it's when it goes in the other direction of obsessive thinking so obsessive thinking is where you get caught up in a mental loop so what that mental loop does is that's where you're like well what if i'd have done this you know if if if, if i'd have done that uh, i really think things would have turned out different things things would have been really different or you know well what if this happens like if this happens then this is going to happen then this is going to happen and so keep in mind that a lot of times when people think that it's just overthinking so it's it's really the obsessive thinking so wh where does where do they blur right like where do they kind of go hand in hand you can easily be an overthinker and, and an obsessive thinker in the same token but I want you to be very clear that when you're an overthinker, it is and has been linked to perfectionism. I'm not saying everybody that overthinks what kind of so did to get you're a perfectionist. I don't mean that. But it's when it becomes a little bit debilitating where you really have a hard time making a decision. It's always like, oh my gosh, if I make this decision, what's gonna happen? Are they gonna people are gonna think weird things of me? Are they going to not like me? You know, so that's overthinking obsessive thinking is the well what if they don't like me okay if they don't like me then this is going to happen well then i might not be good enough well but then if i'm not good enough then this is going to happen so keep in mind that they do go hand in hand now why do we obsessively think why do we overthink all the time repetitively that's a human trait right and your brain is going to work on staying present this is where it's going to be you taking it taking control of your own self and really working on staying in the present moment not five seconds ago not five minutes from now staying here right now not yesterday not tomorrow just now and so what happens is a lot of times when you're dealing with anxiety like i've said before anxiety are things that you haven't it's linked to the things that haven't happened yet what if what if what if depression is more like why didn't i why didn't i could i have okay and yes they can go hand in hand that's how that works combine that with overthinking so that makes the perfect storm, right? So you start overthinking, okay, well, what if I'll draw this line right? This line isn't right, this line isn't right. Somebody's gonna think I'm not a good artist. The overthinking obsessive goes in and the obsessive is like, and then if they don't like me, then this is gonna happen. So then you wanna look a little bit deeper and say, well, why does this bother me so much? Why does somebody's validation mean so much to me? Why do I need this? I mean, listen, nobody wants to walk around and like, I, we hate you. You're like, okay, cool, whatever. I mean, I get that, but you also have to understand that you're not gonna be able to please everybody, right? So. It's about being very clear that why, why is it, does it bother you because something happened when you were younger? Did your dad, did your mom, did your siblings, did teachers, did people tell you that you weren't good enough? Did they make you feel that you weren't good enough? Did they make you feel inadequate? And now you're just grown up or growing up and you're like, okay, well this, once again, deep down inside, if I don't do this right, or what if somebody doesn't like me? So I want you to keep in mind that there's a connector there. There's a mental health component that really does kick into that. What do I recommend for that, you ask? Glad you asked. Um, it's getting very clear with understanding, and I'll do, I promise you I'll do some videos on this, is getting clear with understanding that it's going to be you going sort of back in time a little bit 
and getting to the heart of where the issues are, addressing them, healing them. Um, I recommend therapy. I mean, I do that with my clients, the alternative therapy stuff. Uh, and if you're not in therapy, I would consider it just because you want somebody who's going to hold your hand to kind of help you through it. Yeah. There's a lot of things that you can do on your own, but if I gave you a brand, if I said, here's a brand new car, but I need you to fix it. I mean, here's a car. I need you to fix this for me. And you were like, okay. And I gave you the tools. I was like, here, go fix the car. And you're like, okay. I don't know how to do that. Or if I said, okay, Hey, listen, you're going to be my apprentice for a minute. You're going to be on my apprentice here. And we're going to teach you how to use this tool. What does this mean? What do, why do you need to do something with the transmission? Why do you need this? So you need the tools, the coping strategies. So number one, be very kind to yourself. Be kind to yourself. You know I mean? You've been through a lot. There's typically always a trauma response that ties into your anxieties. That's causing the obsessive thinking. So with that being said, I will try to do some to just give you, just so you have it, you can always reference it and come back to it. But it is something that does work um, when you work it and when you trust the process and when you're patient. That's not always easy to do. But I promise you, your obsessive thinking doesn't mean that that's where you're gonna have to be forever, but you have to be very honest with yourself in wanting to make it better and fix it. So with that being said, I'll talk to you next time.